Hello, today we're going to be going over the Palomino Real Light. This is a 1608. And we are going to be starting up front. Uh, basically, up here, you're going to have your battery disconnect. Basically, you'll be using this guy when you're storing the camper. Anytime you're using the camper, you're plugged in to your tow vehicle. You do want to have this in the on position like it is now. Basically, all you do to turn that off is just turn, key pulls out. Down here is a jumper cable area so if the batteries were dead you're able to hook up jumper cables here and be able to operate the coach as well to try to get it off your tow vehicle of course that guy is not the easiest to access when it is on your vehicle then you got your seven-way hookup down below here these guys here are just to power your motors you got two different motors one's going to be for one's going to be operating your uh, jacks to raise and lower the coach your other one here is to raise and lower your soft side. Next, we got our 30 amp power hookup. Battery does come, or the cable does come with the coach. Then you got your city water hookup with it here. With this guy, it is recommended that you always want to make sure you got a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter, and then your blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you'll hook this guy up. You'll be ready to use the water system right away. The other one here right next to the side, this is basically just a drain for your kitchen sink. So your kitchen sink does not have a tank. Basically, you just hook up a hose here and you can run it. A lot of people do kind of frown upon that though sometimes, but it is not nasty water. It's just soap water that is going onto the ground. As long as you're using uh, biodegradable soaps, things along that nature where it's eco-friendly, there shouldn't be an issue with that. Next, you're gonna have an US or 110 outlet, GFCI protected. Then you got your fresh water fill. Pretty much it's a gravity fed, so you just stick your hose in and let it fill. You do wanna read the monitor panel inside for when it does refill, you wanna shut that water off. You don't wanna wait for the water to start shooting back out at you. Over time, that can cause damage both the exterior of the coach and inside where the hose is connected. Then you got your outside shower, the options of hot and cold water. This guy here is going to be your on-demand water here. Basically, the only thing that you really show you inside here is this, this switch here. Uh, this is the main power switch for this guy. Uh, basically, this is just you only use this when you go to winterize your coach. Basically, when you try to run the antifreeze through, you're not trying to heat that antifreeze up. So you just turn this off just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally come on and start heating that up. This switch also controls the control panel inside for this guy. So this go ahead and turn that on so I can show you that monitor once we have stepped inside. Then we got the furnace, your intake and exhaust. It is recommended you not try to block this guy. That's what the quasher sticker is for. But we do like to recommend mud dauber screens put over these guys to keep the wasp and mud, 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 mud daubers out. Sorry. Uh, basically, they can get in there build nests. Then from there, you would have to have it serviced. And a lot of times, depending on shops, uh, labor rates can be fairly expensive. Uh, those mud dauber screens are usually about $15. Then you got your pretty much your vents for your fridge. Uh, there isn't really anything you have to do inside here except maybe check for mud dauber nest. You just turn these guys upward like so and then pop them out and inspect. Other than that, it's usually mainly service only. You do have a storage compartment in here as well. Storage. And I did forget to show you down here below. You got your low point drains. Your red and blue, blue for hot, uh, blue for cold, red for hot. Basically, these guys are the lowest points of the water line. So when you're uh, done camping, I usually like to say take those caps off, open up a faucet. As you drive home, air is going to blow through those lines, pushing the excess water out for you, so you ain't got water that's stagnant or bad. Uh, also, you'll do that when you go to winterize. All right, as we come around here towards the backside, we're going to have, of course, our entry door here, and we'll come back to this guy here shortly. It is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. You do have your step, uh, little scare light, porch light. As we come around here to the other side, you're gonna have your area for your propane, one 20 pound tank. This guy has been filled, minus what was used to test the propane systems. And then down below is gonna be your black and gray right now these guys are open we're going to go ahead and close those guys off uh basically 
whenever you go to dump, you're always gonna do your black first and then your gray. You know, basically your gray is just gonna be the shower and the black is just your toilet. And it does have the option to where you can and uh, have a battery hooked up to the outside and it does have the leads running inside to hook up. Uh, one thing to note though is when you're hooking up to the tow vehicle, that does have to be taken off. All right. From here, we're gonna step inside. You got your shade that comes down. You got your fire extinguisher right at the entry door. I'm not gonna let you come in just yet, camera lady. <laughs> All right, I will remain outside. Uh, so basically we got our remote here. Uh, when you go to use this guy, you do have to first push this button. That light will light up. And then from there, you can lift the coach. The yellow is all, or you can control each leg individually. Now, when you're going to go lower the soft side of this guy, what you got to do is you got to press and hold this button right here. Uh, it's usually about 10 seconds or so, but then that light will flash or change to red. My apologies. And then from there, you're able to. Oh, wrong one. Use auxiliary one to bring it down and to bring it up. And then you, once again, when you're going to use the ones, you just press and hold. And it'll go back to green. There's sort of some minor click too. And that guy'd stay stationary right there. You do got your drawers up here inside your top drawer. You have the cleaning chemical. Basically, this is for your toilet. This is when you're gonna first use your toilet. It is usually recommended that two ounces will treat a 40 gallon tank. You do not have a 40 gallon tank on this coach. Uh, basically, I would just recommend getting a one ounce shot glass, or you can do one do a one second pour uh, but you're always going to put this in before you start to use the tank once you do that you can use it until you go to dump once you have dumped the tank you will have to put the chemical back in there i always like to say put the chemical in there and try to put a little bit of water in there so if you're doing number two um it won't hit and stick to the bottom of the tank like a spit wad because when that happens it'll just start forming what i like to call a poop mountain i don't mean to be disgusting Nobody wants but a poop that, mountain. But that's what can happen. But then the smells can start to come through the coach. And then we have our owner's manual, or pretty much our bag for our owner's manuals inside here as well. And then you got the other two drawers. Inside this one's going to be our seven-way power cord. And then our other one here has our main power cord. All right, now you can step inside. Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these guys here are pretty much collapsible, but they're storage containers, and they do unhook as well. Um, but these guys do pretty much will fold right up when you go to bring the soft side down. So for your fridge, this guy actually has a couple of different settings on it. So you first go to turn it on. There it goes. So in the auto, it is always looking for 110. Uh, when you go to unplug, as long as the propane tank is on, it will automatically switch over to gas. Right now, it's showing me AC, so it's pulling off the 110. Uh, if it doesn't have the gas option from there, it, it is, should be switching over to DC. If not, you can usually just push this button and automatically switch it to DC, where it would just be running off the battery. Back in auto, you can... Change it to just gas if you want, or auto. And then this one is AC or DC. And then you got your temperature setting here. Five is gonna be the coldest. Usually like to say set it on four and five when you first turn it on. Um, these guys usually take anywhere between 12 to 24 hours to properly cool down. So I do like to recommend try to turn it on a day or two uh, before you guys go to leave. So that way it does get the temp. And then you also wanna go to the grocery store earlier in the week to get groceries. That way they're cold from your fridge instead of being chilled from the store. Because a lot of times everything beside your freezer section is open for easy grab, uh, easy convenience of grab and go. So it's not going to be as cold as it would be from your home. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well. And then this guy here, you just lift this up to open it up. And then you do have a small little freezer up top as well. 
and it does also have startups instructions here at the bottom of your fridge. All right, the next we're gonna have the furnace. This is single ducted. This it just comes out right out of here. That's gonna be controlled from your thermostat right over here on the left side. Basically, you'll hear a click. See, I see it just fired up, but it probably ain't gonna come on because I don't think the propane is on at this time. We'll go ahead and turn that off. If you're unsure if it's not lit or not, one thing you can always do is inside here, there's a small little window right there and you'll be able to see that flame in that window. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna have our stove range area here. Basically with this guy, uh, you do have to use a barbecue lighter to light it, but you're gonna pretty much turn this to that all the way to the top, the light, and then use your barbecue lighter to light it. I would usually like to recommend, it probably wouldn't hurt to take this guy off. Um, if you have this on with no pans on it, it will probably, that heat's going to over time start causing damage to that as well. And then always make sure that this is down during uh, travel and it's not a glass stove top. Then we got our sink. Um, always make sure you twist that, you got to twist that guy to pull him out. And then you got your little dish drain or somewhat of a cutting board. People use it for multiple different things. Um, so basically when you go to turn this guy on for your hot water, down here is the control panel for that. So right now, I just turned that panel off actually, so we'll turn that guy on. From there, you're able to adjust your temperature settings. I believe this guy goes as high as 122 degrees. Oh, no, I'm wrong. This one's 124, my apologies. But then you're able to change between Celsius and Fahrenheit, whatever one you would like. And then from there, as soon as you go to turn this guy on, it, you'll see like a fan looking motion and then you'll see what looks like a shower head and then you'll see the flame icon uh, but basically from there it's just letting you know that hey I'm going through my cycle and I'm attempting to start um, a lot of times though uh, if it doesn't start getting hot you do want to look and see make sure the tank wasn't that we didn't forget to turn the tank on or if the tank is possibly empty uh, that's usually one of the two main common issues with these guys not properly firing up uh, the only other one, and it's a rare occasion, though, usually can be, is not strong enough water pressure. Uh, if the water pressure isn't strong enough, you might have this set at 122 degrees, uh, but it's only giving you possibly 113 to 115 to 17. I've seen it happen a few times from where water pressure wasn't as strong. Basically, this is just going to be an access panel for um, uh, the draining for here. There isn't really anything you got to mess with inside there. Uh, inside here, you're able to like hold your sponge or your small containers of dish soap to do your dishes. Uh, these here are our screws for actually the cover that goes on this guy right here. Uh, so inside here, this is where our water tank is located. You also have your winterization hose. Basically with this guy, this goes into your jugs of antifreeze. And then from there, you would use the water pump to winterize your coach. Uh, your valve setting is going to be over here. So right now our knob is actually set in winterized position, so it would be pulling from this hose. So for the fresh water tank, you would just turn this upward to where it would be pulling from your water tank. Here, wait, no, I got that back. No, that is right. Put that back in our winterized position at this time. When you go to drain your fresh water tank, that is actually going to be located right down here. They make it all nice and fun to get to, but there's a drain knob right here that you pull pull up to drain push push it down to fill the tank when you go to drain the tank you're going to pull that guy up and right now it is in the up position so that the water can escape from after the uh, other tech testing uh inside here's where our batteries are located uh, i believe there is one 24 series battery in here uh, you can put two in and then you run parallel. And then, like I said, you see that one outside where you could have a third battery if you wanted to. Um, but you just got to remember that that has to come off before it goes on the truck. Right down here is our solar, pan uh, solar control panel. Basically, it just monitors the battery. Um, once the batteries get below a certain level, it'll allow the surge of the control or solar panel to come through to charge the batteries. Once the batteries are reading full through this guy, it shuts that cir uh, circuit off. Over here is going to be our fuse control panel box. 
Everything that has to have 110 or sure power to operate is going to be on your breakers. Everything that operates off the battery is on the fuses, and they do have everything here labeled for you for what they are. Then next we're going to have our LP slash carbon monoxide detector. This guy is recommended that you should be testing this every 9 to 14 days. To do that test, you just simply push this button. It is a little loud, and it's going to give us another beep there. And then I believe this model has a second style beep as well. As you see, it's just that simple to perform that test. You do want to make sure that guy is properly working. Um, these guys got a life expectancy. They usually say seven to 10 years, but I have seen them go bad before that. And um, I actually have been noticing like with these guys here, they actually put the ma uh, the replace date on the front, which is really nice. Certain models are on the back. You got to remove it to find out. Uh, but I've been noticing that a lot of these dates are uh, a lot sooner than the seven to 10 year span. But then again, we also don't know when they were made by the manufacturer as well. So that's something also you got to keep in mind. Uh, next, we got our GFCI outlet here, but this is our reset. So if you go around certain outlets that got the GFCI stickers on them are not working, check to make sure this guy has not been tripped. And then we got our switch here for the water pump. All right. And then up top is going to be where our bed is located. You got your cushions here basically for the couch area. Uh, there is storage up above as well. Uh, on your soft sides, these guys are able to unzip and you're able to roll it down so you can get that airflow. Uh, I do always like to recommend though when you go to re-zip these guys up, make sure the zippers are towards the top. That way if there is rain, they couldn't potentially get in. Uh, they got the little flaps on the outside to help kind of protect from rain from getting in. Um, this line here is for your air conditioner. It just goes through a hole right down here. This here is going to be your leg for your table. Basically, this guy here goes right in, and then you twist till it gets tight. Well, don't it didn't lock in on me. There we go. Sometimes it can be temperamental. As you see, that guy will lift. There's a lock there to hold that in place. And then you would have your table that goes right on top. And it kind of gives you a little swivel room so that you're able to kind of swivel it out so you can get in there if you want. And then they got this cap piece here. So when this is not in here, you're able to stick that cap right in there. Inside here, you're usually able to store this guy here. And it'll stay nice and hidden. There's no storage underneath that guy. This guy here is your fire exit window. So if you're unable to make it to the door, you do have a way to get out. This is actually on a hinge. So this window would open, but you can actually fling the window all the way open so you can get out. Uh, they always got this here so, here so you can try to pull it out before you try to get out. I always look at it if there's a fire. Um, I don't give a darn about the screen. I'd rather here to replace you. We had to replace the screen than someone receiving burns from trying to pull a screen out. Um, always do make sure, try to go feet first, unless you're a good tumbler, and then you can tuck and roll. Uh, you got a USB hookup right here as well, so you can charge your phones. And then inside this area here, open this up here. So basically you got your shower right here. Um, and then of course that's gonna be just your gray tank. Inside there is just a little storage compartment. It might have a toilet paper holder in there. Let's Not yet. You could put one in there. I'm looking at the camera. I ain't seeing it. Uh, but then you got your toilet here. So for the toilet, uh, when you're going to do your business, you would lightly press on the pedestal underneath to add water so you could do your business. And then after that, all the way down to flush. And once again, we always want to make sure that we have a little bit of liquid in the bottom of that tank and our cleaning chemical. I do always usually like to say if you take non-stick cook spray, spray the bowl of the toilet, it does help everything slide down easier, makes an easier clean for the cleaner. Um, but just try not to confuse a uh, bathroom pan with kitchen pan, it's kind of a little unsanitary. Pams don't like to be confused with each other. And then, uh, 
And then we have pretty much our curtains to fold around to try to keep our areas dry from there. All right, and then from there, it looks like we have made our way back to the door. Hopefully this video is knowledgeable and informational for you. And if you guys do have questions, please feel free to call us. And we do our best to try to answer those for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.